It's a joy to serve saints who are able to receive with meekness the word of Yahweh. We don't fight over doctrine and we don't vote over doctrine. We present that which is written and give revelation on it and we follow it with gladness. This is the place and this forum in general is one in which we rejoice at the work of Yahweh. Amen? Amen. He's good to us. It's good to have girlfriend and all the children here with us as well. And our brother, Apostle Branham, is here with us. Uh, yesterday was Brother Terence's birthday. We call him Chubby. You see, he's 60 years old according to Yahweh's calendar. I like that. He ain't fun with the Pope anymore. I'm fine with that. Amen? But I praise Yahweh for him and for the the continuous encouragement he continues to be to me. Being able to see this young man, uh, he is young, uh, continue to grow in grace and in stature. Continue to be resolved or to follow the truth at all costs. It has cost him quite a bit. But he continues to persevere. And for that, I am grateful. Amen. I am grateful. Pastor Brown, is there anything you want to share with us before I begin to preach today? Yeah. There you go. I know what he's saying. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Something uh, the Spirit has laid upon my heart uh, the last 48 hours. And it's very simple, very simple, very short. And But, but I'm continuing to be filled with faith by the demonstration of the power of the Spirit because it comes in simple things, not complex thoughts and the wisdom of men. But it was something this morning, something I said the last two days I was reading on, I was reading in Hebrews 13. And it's just funny, verse 8, very simple, we've all heard it. Anybody who's been anywhere around the church has heard it their entire life. It says, Yeshua the Messiah is the same yesterday and today and forever. Thank you, Lord. So it's something I need to express right now. Just just know if He is the Spirit of Truth and the reason He is the same yesterday, today, and forever is that the truth has no relativity. The truth has no greatness. The truth is the truth. And it's not your truth and it's not my truth. Right. It is His truth. Amen. So the reason He can say He is the same yesterday, today, and forever he knew that there would be LGBT rights fought. He knew that there would be uh, women's will. He knew that there would be all the fights that we would face today. And he still gave us a word that said he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in the ending point was this specifically. Know this, the spirit of truth does not have to adapt. You have to adapt to, to him. Amen. And He will change you from the inside out. Amen. He does not adapt to the world's circumstances. He doesn't adapt to the world's conspiracy theories. He knows what is and what's going to be. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. And that's why He and His absoluteness is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And know this, He will change you to His truth. He will never change for you. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, we said we have something to say today. He will change us to his truth. And the truth of Yahweh does not evolve. And that is so important based on what we're going to talk about today. Which is what should your leaders pray for you? We continue to teach in prayer because it's so essential. And it's so critical for us to understand what those who are called to truth should follow. If you're misinformed about the truth, then it is expected for you to be misinformed about what you should pray and how you should pray. And I spent a few days over the weekend sharing with you the absolute nonsense that Christ and the nation's leaders have been begun to disseminate. 
And it has to do with the about today, doesn't bring it up. And Yahweh yeah, knows why he brought that to me, so I can stop talking today. When you venture into myths and fables and mermaid theology, it will direct your prayer. So there will be a warfare against no marine spirits. And people will be calling spirits from the sea to bind them in prayer. When those things are non-existent, there is nothing called a mermaid in scripture because they don't exist. When you have a notion that says that if a woman is single, a saint in the kingdom is single, she's married, that is the result of a, a, a marine spirit? So a single lady who wants a man will have to bind the marine spirit that's affecting her finding a fellow. Where is that in scripture? So again you see the error will make you begin to pray erroneously. What is this now? But whenever someone prays in error, someone will answer. If you pray in error, somebody will hear. And error will answer. As long as error answers the person, what happens now is they call that truth. So a single woman who has been taught by these people, Harper, that okay, if you're single, it's a marine spirit that you can't find a man. What do you call it? Perpetual spinsterhood. And that came from an African book, by the way. These African people are writing more garbage than anything else. But it's making money. Because can you imagine how many single ladies want a man who will go for deliverance? From singleness? When Shaul the Apostle said that it's better if you stay single. So Shaul said it's better if you remain in a marine spirit then. Because he said you're better off not marrying anybody. Because when you marry there will be trials in your life. And the single woman is better off than the married woman. But Christ in the nation says a single woman has a marine spirit. And I was off. So, so, so the, the, the trouble would be persons will pray this because they believe it. And a man will show up to the woman. But sent by who? And to do what? And that is why you find in the church so many persons are married and they are regretting the fact that that prayer was answered. Are you all alright? Yeah. Alright, alright. I'm going to a long time. Let me, let me warm up. If Yahweh assigns a person to your life, assigns a person, because you say, okay then, this person was given to me by God, by Yahweh, you will not regret being with them. That's right. That's right. Amen. You shall be better when you're with them. You won't regret being with them. For every good and perfect gift comes to move. Yeah. Thank you. So you call your spouse a gift, but regret having the gift. I'm just to speak to the gifts of, of, of ascension and the gifts of the church. But I'm saying if you call the person a gift that's perfect, there's the one sent for me, then why regret? But if error comes and answers the prayer, and, 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 and the adversary knows you just pray in error all the time because if you, if you need money, it's a spirit of, it's a marine spirit. And what I found to be so insane is if you're afraid of water, it's a marine spirit. Okay, fine. You're scared of the ocean, that's a marine spirit. But if you like water, it's also a marine spirit. So what I can do now? And then, after talking all that about marine spirit, you go and have the heart of baptism. <laughs> So you put the people in the place where marine spirits grew because they found the pools, rivers, lakes, streams, ocean, everywhere. When the church begins to walk in error, 
there is no end to it. Yes, but when the church walks in the truth, there's a confinement in it. Yes. You are held in place by the truth of Yahweh's word. Yes. And that's why I was happy when Apostle Bradham said, God, that's how he confirmed things to me. You, nobody in the world, nobody on the planet has the power to adjust Yahweh's word and make him follow it. Yes. So what is the truth of a prayer then? The Gospel according to Yochanan chapter 17. Yochanan, according, the Gospel according to chapter 17. Yeshua's prayer, Yeshua's praying. And we covered most of it, but let's go to the part where I want to take it to. What should leaders pray for regarding your life? Because the church is today going to be informed that many things that you have requested of leaders to pray for you, for they should not. Man, be you. Let me say to you again, many things that you have asked leaders to pray for you for or about, they should not. You will be encouraged. You will be discouraged first. Then you'll be encouraged. Then you say, boy, I'm growing up fast. I'm growing in faith, I'm growing in stature, and I can handle this. All right, verse number 20. The Gospel according to Yochanan chapter 17, verse 20. I pray, said Yeshua, not only for these, which be his disciples, but also those who will trust or believe in me because of their word, their teaching, their doctrine. Do you see that? Not a new thing. So when Yeshua the Messiah prayed that moment, Everyone who came after that, including those today, are a product of this prayer. Yes. Uh, yes. And the doctrines of the apostles. Yes. Saints, we don't invent new doctrines in the church. No. Now we have the apostolic gift. And that gift is used to reinforce the apostolic doctrine. That's right. Not to make new ones. Look at this. He prayed that they may all be one. Denominations in trouble now. The Messiah prayed that they, those who believe on the Apostles' doctrine, will all become one. Now you may have different groupings, but it is the same belief you must have Amen. one Father, one Spirit, one Lord, one baptism, one immersion, right. one body. One Anything apart from that, you trouble. Amen. One. My question has always been Is the Father Yahweh able to answer his son? Yes, yes. Because if this prayer here can't be answered, stop praying today. Right. If Yahweh can answer this, he can answer you. Right. So all those who posit that, oh, we're preaching division in the church. We're dividing the body. Then this prayer here is too weak. Because if, if Messiah Yeshua said, that those who believe on the doctrine of the apostles will be one, it has to be answered. Yes. Because Ephesians 4 states it, until we all come into the yes. unity of faith and unity of knowledge yes. of the Son of Yahweh, into a mature person, that's what the gifts are given for. Yes. Until we all come into the unity of trust and of knowledge. Yes. So it's possible for the prayer to be answered. He said, just as you, Father, are united with me and I with you, I pray that they may be united with us so that the world may believe. What? I hope you understand how serious this is. The world will never believe that the Messiah was sent by the Father if the church is not united. Amen. No, he didn't say, show them some miracles and signs so they believe. The world believes based on the unity of the church. 
Are you here? Yeah. Yeah. Not signs and wonders, because the miracle signs and wonders will also be done by the anti-Messiah. Right. But the world will know the saints when the saints are all gathered in oneness, in unity, singleness of mind, and they are not like the world. Okay, now look at this. This is our example praying for us. And I am searching his prayer and trying to find where he spoke about Father, make them wealthy. So that they would know the world would know they bless people. You mean to tell me that with all this prosperity preaching around, if it's so important that the Messiah would miss asking the Father for this right here? Oh boy. Yeshua, the Messiah, has never once prayed for the church to be rich. Never. Watch this. So how do we have persons come in and pray a line for financial miracles and wealth? Who sent you? That's the error. Why are we coming for prayer to be wealthy? When our Messiah, the leader, never prayed for us to be. Okay, we have the next one. Where do you see him praying that every single woman in the church will have a husband? Come on, y'all talk to me. Church. Some persons will live and die single. And it's not a curse. It's a blessing. That's not a problem. I saw Regina send me something the other day, and maybe she normally sends things by me before she puts it anywhere. Where this woman is on Instagram saying that you single ladies, instead of praying to God for a husband, pray to God about your husband. Pray for your husband, sorry. Don't pray to God to give you one. Just pray for him as if you have him already. And pray and bless that man. And talk to your husband in the spirit. And talk about who he's going to be. So so Red said, Daddy, um, is this is this a good thing to do? Because he's single. I said, don't do it. Don't even think about it. Because who said that every single person in the church must have a man? What if Yahweh doesn't want you to have a husband? But leadership in the church has committed a serious spiritual crime. And that is, they continue to pray what in the saints hearing what they want the saints to feel good about. Not the truth. So they like to say things you to feel nice. Based on what they know is an expectation that a normal person has. But I want to take you to Ephesians chapter 1 to show you how the apostles prayed. Let me show you what I pray for in your life as well. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Ephesians 1 13. Are you there? Amen. Furthermore, you who heard the message of truth, the good news, offering you deliverance, and put your trust in the Messiah, you were sealed by Him with the promised Ruach HaKodesh, which is the Holy Spirit. Um, the Adventists said that Saturday is a seal. But this here said, you are sealed with what? Where do you have the weakest that? Where do you have the weakest Holy Spirit? Not today. Because they go to your covenant and say, hey, you have a seal. And the seal is Saturday, it's Friday, it's Saturday, it's Saturday, it's Saturday. They said, you who believe in the gospel of Messiah are sealed by a promise. Who is Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. When you have the seal of Holy Spirit, watch this. It guarantees your inheritance until we come into possession of it. And thus bring him praise 
commensurate with his glory. Verse 50. Now today you are in the shop of house and car, that's why it's quiet. A man. For this reason, saints, ever since I shall have heard about your faith, your trust in the Lord Yeshua, and your love for all Yahweh's people. Watch this. I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Let's see what he prayed for now. In my prayers, I keep asking. You have to move. In my prayers, I keep asking the God of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the glorious Father, what he's asking for in his prayer, to give you a spirit of wisdom and Yes, some of you look sad already, but stay with me, you'll be all right. Look at what the leader of the church is praying for them to have. A spirit of wisdom and revelation. So that you will have full knowledge of him. Man, listen here. This apostle showed the Timothy, his son. They prayed for these people to have wisdom, revelation, so that with the wisdom and revelation, they will have full knowledge of Yahweh. And the churches around this place are despising you who happen to begin to walk in this. They are upset with your knowledge. They're telling you, if you, why do you think you know so much? Why shouldn't you? When did being ignorant become an asset to a saint? And some devil start telling you, knowledge pops up. So why don't you lack the knowledge then? It is not the same thing. It's a language issue. Knowledge pops up is earthly human knowledge that makes you proud in thinking, I don't have to have his information to live. I live by what I think, which is what most of the churches do anyway. But the knowledge of Yahweh can never make you proud. It humbles you. Pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you will have full knowledge of Yahweh. I pray that he will give you or give light to the eyes of your hearts, which is in mind, so that you will understand the hope which he has called you to. My God. Ooh, what rich glories there are in the inheritance he's promised his people. And how surpassingly great is his power working in us who trust him. It works with the same strength he used when he worked in the Messiah to raise it from the dead. Saints, this is what the apostle prayed for in the church. Where in this you seek money? House. Cards. Man and woman. The most blessed thing you can have in your life is wisdom and revelation of who you are really. Because when you get to understand who he is, listen here, the temporary things around you don't matter. Because you have got an insight into, into divinity. You've got an understanding of the power that's inside you. Why am I getting this baby so much this afternoon? He said, see me Lord, the kingdom and his righteousness. Uh-huh. And all other things shall be. There you go. Seek first the kingdom, which is the sovereignty of Yahweh. Marvelous. Who's marvelous in here? Interrupt Paul for intermission say. Marvelous. Come and see the Latin now. This time for breaks now. After a while, you got to step on the gas and on the pedal. And you don't move until I say amen. Right. The saints in the kingdom have got too much 
available to them in terms of wisdom and revelation for the little things in life that are temporary to get to focus. But how many preachers do you hear praying for this to happen to you? This is, this is so serious this afternoon, church. The, the apostle was praying for an entire city of believers. Ephesus, the church. And he said, I want the same thing for every one of you. Oh, talk to me now. He didn't say, I have a special word for brother this one, and brother that one, and sister that one. I pray the same thing for all of you, because when you grow in knowledge, you understand the inheritance that you have. It is not inheritance of house and land. There's a glory that's in you as a person that you will never understand unless you have knowledge of Yahweh. What this I show you. In Luke 17, Yeshua said that the same glory I had with you, Father, I give to my apostles. You know what I mean? Do you know what that means, church? He didn't say a different glory. He said the same glory I had with you, I give to them. That's why when they start preaching then, the whole world could be the same. Now with that glory in them, Shaul said, I want you to have a spirit of understanding, of wisdom, of revelation, so you have full knowledge of Yahweh. Can you know Yahweh fully? Yes. What did they tell you before you heard this today? Uh, Nobody it. can. Uh, so what they say? Yeah. This full knowledge means maturing in understanding who he is. Apostle Steve was saying it, he didn't read what I said this morning. But there is no gray area in this knowledge here. Let's go to another, another prayer. Philippians, next one. Ephesians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Chapter 1. Most people like to read the first chapter in these things and skip past the first part. That's why you miss so much information. Verse 3. I thank my God every time I think of you. Whenever I pray, shall we start with them again here now, and Timothy? Whenever I pray for all of you, I always pray with joy because you have shared in proclaiming the good news from the very first day until now. Let's go to verse 9. And Philippians chapter 1 verse 9. And this is my prayer. Let's see what the prayer is. That your love may be more and more overflowing in fullness of knowledge and depth of discernment. What is this? So that you will be able to determine what is best. And thus be pure and without blame for the day of Messiah. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Yeshua the Messiah to the glory and praise of Yahweh. I gotta go through that again. He said, This is what I'm talking to heaven about for you. That your love may more and more overflow. In fullness of what? Knowledge. Is the word knowledge there again? Yes. So thus far, what is of importance to the apostle? Knowledge. What you know. Not what you have. Yes. What you know is very important to the apostle. But why can't we shout and sing and dance and, and just have fun? That's not what you know. Why are we so adamant that you must have certain bits of information available to you? Because that's a, an apostle's heart. What you know. What go ahead, apostle. Every teacher in the world will say, what you know is more uh -huh. important than what you feel. Oh. What you know is more important than what you feel. I would not have you ignorant. Why did he say that? If knowledge isn't important. And what this, you must know it. You must have fullness in knowledge and depth of discernment. So, verse 10, so that you will be able to determine what is best. 
wait, 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 wait. So where in this you see that you always have to ask me what's best? No, boy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Knowledge it makes you good. Mm. When you have the knowledge of Yahweh, you don't need counsel often. Yeah, boy. Yeah. You develop a discerning or a discernment from, from Yahweh that, hey, this is not right. Yes. Yes. Nobody else is going to tell you that. Amen. You develop immaturity. You say, you know what? This is not right. Amen. This is right. Amen. I shouldn't do that. I should do this. Amen. I shouldn't say that. I should say this. Only that one more coming. I shouldn't watch that. Next month, I shouldn't dance because Marshall Money coming next month. I shouldn't dance to that because you say sanctified, fear with Holy Ghost. I'm going on the road. Well, the music starts, but you, you, you have to share Jesus, but not to sure because you cannot win any soul if the soul of in front bounce their age next in line and you behind them, all the music in your head. Flesh, flesh on the floor. You will discern where you should be as a saint. Talk to me, somebody. When you grow in knowledge, you don't need a lot of instructions. Because Yahweh already has given you the truth. Oh, we're going somewhere with this this afternoon. Where do you see him saying, as you grow in knowledge, you'll start a church? Or you'll start to preach? Your increase in knowledge is not about increasing your authority in the church. It's about what you ought to do as a person in general. So in your house now, your decision making is based on the discerning you have. And the knowledge you've increased in. So children, what daddy used to say was right yesterday could be wrong tomorrow. Because knowledge has increased. So the rule has to change. Amen. Since I got better information now, what mommy wants allowed you to do, you can't do anymore. Because knowledge has increased. Amen. But Apostle, this is rough. Yes? We are inside the fourth teacher for the children. Thank you, sir. Amen. So don't tell me that you, you before you saved, your children were allowed to go and party. Now you save, and they still are allowed to go. Where's the difference? If you're grown, if you're old, I can't stop you from going. Because you're old. Or you're working. But if you're living under my roof, and you're old, and you're working, and you want to party, you will find another roof. So right. Look how you're looking at me. Amen. I don't feel you to go dance on the floor and, and no, no boy. If you got your own house, your own crib, your own whatever you call it, you go where you want to go. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But when you're living on the where I live, then you're governed by my rules. Yes. And if you don't let my rules, then find another place to live. Amen. But look at me say, if I gotta be up in the morning three o'clock, hoping you come home. Because young people nowadays don't stop party two o'clock. The sun gotta come up. Imagine Ramat, what a fellow name. The Minister of National Security, Ramatar, got to fix the time to stop you off from this behavior. And the time. And you still can't stop. The law is for the law. The law is for the lawless. No man. When you are saved, the rules in the house are supposed to change. The way your house operates must change. And you have a right to announce it. I am different. So what happens in here will be different. And if you don't like it, move out. Yes. But no, some parents are so afraid that you are better than Yahweh keeping your children. So you got to watch them all day. And they're still wicked. You might as well sleep because your eyes are working. And your prayers aren't working. And your prayers can't work either because you watch and you pray and you fast and they're still wicked. Release them as now Apostle told you last week. Yes. Let it go. Yes. They are mature, they're old. Yes. 
and they don't want to be stubborn? Yes. Yahweh knows why they give it stubborn truth. <laughs> he knows that maybe I make to prison. <laughs> you can't be in my house and, 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 and present you to some boss. Never. You know why? When you grow in knowledge and you have a depth of discernment, wives, you don't stop your husband from correcting the children. No, you better say amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. I love it. Because he has grown in discernment. He has a better knowledge of how to deal with a man. Yes. May I inform you that you mothers can never raise a son? Yes. You can feed him. Yes. You can cook for them. Yes. You can buy clothes for them. Yes. But you can never make them a man. No. Amen. It takes a man to make a man a man. Yes. How do you make them a man? So me, how much can how you how we make them a man? Mm. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The first thing a boy must learn is authority. Yes. Not compromise. Right. You see this one, you say sitting quiet now? Because he had long enough rope. So the line is drawn in the sand with me from now. You will sit till I say amen. If you cry, you will cry sitting. Because you're moving. I could tell them the story, Mary. I don't talk too much of the story. <laughs> Mary got the best of me. The Bible said I was preaching one time and she made me marvelous stage and decided she, that's her time to interact with friends. When I talk, and I told the church, give me a minute, please, hold on. Pause, just a second, just one second. You! What you come here for? To talk with your friend? Come and sit in front. And don't breathe till I stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me too hard is what I'm being disturbed. And I go, oh my God. And she sat as a little girl beside a man and couldn't move. Uh. She had to sit. Yes. When I got home, I said, when you see, and when you go to fellowship with me, you're going to play. When we finish, you play. Yes. But you are here to sit and pay attention. Yes. That's how you raise them to understand authority. Yes. And they don't, they don't hate me. You hate me, baby. You know, don't say that. <laughs> I'm a cool guy. Yes. <laughs> but they have to, they, you have to teach them authority as a man. Yes. How does a son earn authority by following instructions? If you do not instruct a young man, he will never understand authority. That's right. Amen. And he must also learn that there's a consequence of following what I say. He must learn the consistency of a father. Don't do it means don't do it. Come means come. If I say, Mark, come here. It don't change until he shows up. You don't forget I call you. Come here means show up. Move this means move it, then go to something else. So when he goes to school as a boy, he will have his moments, but not many. You will know what is best and thus be pure. Oh, there's a bad word coming up for the church now. And without blame. Hold on here. Without blame means that you're perfect in behavior. Nobody is perfect, so why is it here? Why is this documented in here? Yeshua said he's coming for a church. People like say, without spot or what? Blame. Or blame. You know what I mean? When he comes back, the church is going to be mature in its conduct without blame. If the church tells you that it's impossible, then it's impossible to come back. <laughs> but what makes you grow to a place whereby you are pure and you have no blame? Knowledge. Thank you. 
The more you know of Yahweh, the more you grow in your conduct. You mature. And he said you'll be filled, verse 11, with the fruit of righteousness that comes through where? It can't come from yourself. Good behavior is not a fruit of righteousness. Self-discipline is not a fruit of righteousness. It is what's given to you by Messiah Yeshua, sure, nothing else. So we have the prayer of the for, the for the saints in Ephesus, the Philippian saints. Let's go to the Colossians now. This is very hard to get broken. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. Are you there? Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Whenever we pray, he's not talking plural, himself and Timothy. Whenever we pray, we always give thanks for you to Yahweh, the Father of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Verse number 11. We pray, he's defining what he prayed for now, that you will be continually strengthened with all the power that comes from what? His glorious mind. Look at the next line. So that you will be able to persevere and be patient in any situation joyfully. Okay. Alright, see. Giving thanks to the Father for having made you fit to share the inheritance of his people in the light. We pray that you will be continually strengthened with all the power that comes from his glorious might so that you will be able to persevere and be patient in any situation. Where in this do you see him saying, I pray that you come out of any situation in your life. A person I have a lot of challenges and it seems that the devil has intensified his attack on my life. Can you please pray for God to stop these things? No! Because it's said in here that the prayer is you will persevere and you'll be patient in any situation. Patience means that you sit and watch a situation pass you by. Doesn't it mean? So it may be bad. But when you're patient, you say, I will sit right here and I'll watch this situation and this storm go by me. It won't carry me with it. No. Oh. Oh. Yes. You're yeah. yeah, not troubled. Yes, Brian. It's more like you live in here, it's a classroom. Right. no automatic promotion. <laughs> I love it. That's right. <laughs> Look at this thing. We pray that you'll be continually strengthened with all power that comes from his glorious might. You're strengthened with power that comes from Yahweh's might, not your will. And when you get that power from Yahweh, you'll persevere and you'll be patient in any situation. Look at the next word. Joyfully. You come out sulky and mad. No. They must ask you what bothers you. Why are you always smiling for everything? Nothing troubles you. Where, where you can have this joy from? Those who work with you must ask you that. Why is it that a company is in trouble but you're not? I see some folk when the government changed it, they spent weeks mourning. <laughs> you swear they're dead. Or somebody died for them. The no confidence motion got a lot of saints, they claim to be saints, in shock. <laughs> and they're binding charadas. <laughs> Come on, saints. We persevere. Whatever happens to us, we are at ease. Because we have knowledge. And we have power from Yahweh. And we are able to go through whatever it is. I 
I said, this here can out me. Yeah. Now, if you just heard what I said, you will see why the different services in church are a waste of time. Yeah. Because it's the knowledge you have that delivers you. Yeah. You will know the truth. Yeah. And the truth shall set you free. Yeah. Not a prayer line will set you free. You will know the truth. And the truth that you know will free you. Where did that you see the different service? Nowhere. Apostle, that's why Yahweh said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for what? And you may not to say something else. Why? Because you have rejected my knowledge. So I shall reject you and your children. That's what he said. I have a shocker for some of y'all. And it may shock some of you, it may make some of you realize, wow, I never knew that before. And others will say, duh, I always knew that. But the ones who will be shocked, you'll be alright. Apostle Stephen, have you ever seen one scripture? One, just, just one. It is just a line. Where an apostle in the scripture casts a demon out of the saint. No. Can anybody find one for me, please? No. You're serious? That's, 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 you can't, it can't work. You can't find one? No. So how you got so many leaders in church after their deliverance today? Can't work. A different church. And so many safety deliverance. The church of here. How can people today in the church who are saved, talking in tongues, full of the spirit of truth, they say, and still need the difference of a demon. <laughs> Produce every day. Church, there is zero account in scripture of a saint having a demon. None. Why? Because when you grow in knowledge and you are able to discern what is proper, and you have the might of Yahweh, which demon can hold on to you? God. God. Yes, Sister Jack. Apostle Paul said that they want to go for the deliverance. They don't want to be going through. They want to depend on the person that put them up for them. Ah, feel good. I feel nice when they hands on me. Make it feel so nice. Yes. That's why I don't do that here much. Because you will not mirror what people practice out there and think it works in here. What I give you in here is the truth. And if the truth is not enough to give you freedom, don't come to me pray for you. <laughs> yes, of course. In my devotion this morning, I was in Titus, and it's funny how Yahweh would take you to a place, and you just never know how or why, and then it shows up. But then in Titus chapter 1, in verse 10, it says, For there are many rebellious men, and empty oh, talkers, and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, who must be silenced because they are upsetting whole families, teaching things they should not teach for the sake of sordid gain. Wow. Wow. Of course, what you said earlier at the beginning of the service, not paying attention to myths and commandments and men who try for truth. People, we must pay attention. And it tells also, he told Titus, the son of Shaul, he said, reprove these men. Yeah. Which is to put them to shame. He Open said to yeah. rebuke them. He said to reprove them. He said refute all those who contradict this sound Wow. Amen. He said refute them, reprove them, and make sure no one does not hear you. Amen. Please say it again, please. Wow. This is the end of Titus to make sure no one, no one ignores him or no one does not hear him. Nobody is talking about in the church. Must hear them. That no one disregards you. Teach these things with much conviction yes. and exhort reproof with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Wow. This is serious. This is major serious. Look at the assignment Shaul gives his son Titus. Now look at this. If Shaul could tell Titus to behave this way, can you imagine how tough Shaul was? Yes. As a father. That's why I don't blink with them in the week. <laughs> yes, brother. I asked my sister Raga, the looking one of being good is two different things. Sure he is. She could not have answered me. She said, right now he's a top. I think it's a big two different things. Looking one of being good is two different things. Two different things. 
says, you are supposed to be able to go through every situation in your life, any situation, joyfully. Amen. That's a prayer. Amen. He didn't say, I pray that no demon or no devil attacks your finances Amen. or your family. He didn't say, I plead the blood around your family. A bloodline. He didn't say, I draw the bloodline. I don't know what I mean. The bloodline is supposed to be genealogy, genetics. The genes you inherit, the genotype, the phenotype. But they got bloodline. I draw the bloodline around my house. What amazes me is if you draw the bloodline around your house, how you come to the difference? How did he even read me on the bloodline? And then the pastor asked about around the church. I draw the blood around this church, the bloodline. We, 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 and they pour it all on the church ground. And then the person comes in the church with a different. So the demon will cross the bloodline. And across the aisle. And in the church. When you have this understanding today, I promise you that the way you pray will be different. It has to be different. Yes. Because you're not going before Yahweh burdened by what happens to you. You're going before Yahweh saying, I am patient. Yes. I know this is happening to me yes. and I am willing yes. to persevere. Yes. To press on. Yes. I am not going to quit. No. No, sir. Yes, my brother. People, please understand that, that this is the authority of tearing down strongholds that the Apostle Charlotte talked about. Amen. Because all the things that you have been taught and believed your whole life, these are the strongholds of your belief and mind. And this is the spirit of war, the warfare of the spirit, that when you brought with the real knowledge, that these strongholds are torn down, Hallelujah. that you are set free. Amen. Amen. That's what he says to the Corinthian church. We have the authority, the apostles, to tear down strongholds yes. and to bring into captivity every thought. The church doesn't do that. The apostles do that for the church. Bring every thought into captivity, into obedience then. Because when you understand this kind of stuff right here, you're not coming to me telling me you are. I have a problem with my, with my, 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 my finances. I have a problem with my, my, my health. I have a problem with this. And, and, and please, the, the Lord is really allowing the devil to do a lot to me. For what? In this life, you will have trials. In this life. You shall have trials. Yes. On your best behavior, yes. you will have trials. Yes. It gets worse when you get better. Uh -huh. Oh, let me walk y'all now. The, the holier you are, yes. the more righteous you walk, the more upright you stand, I promise you, yes. there's a mark on your head that says trial, 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 persecution, rejection, abandonment. This is what the, 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 the feel good people don't like it. They were heard that. And the, I'm sure they say some of them in the house, he's scaring the church. <laughs> so Sakuri so said, don't trust me for that. Exactly. No, you're making us feel scared. Encourage the church. Encourage you to do what? I'm encouraging you to persevere. Because you will have trials. I read the book. And the book said, many are the afflictions. Not one. Not one. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yahweh delivers him out of all of the afflictions. Church, you can't have a deliverer if you don't have trouble. There's no need for it. What are you wanting for? The scripture says, the apostles' example to the church, they said, we glory. In tribulation. Yes. Now we become weak and tired no. and give up. No. We glory in tribulation. Yes. I always marvel at Shaul and Kepha when they were in prison. The scripture never said they prayed to be free. And they didn't bind the chain demon. <laughs> Take do that. 
These fellows were so tough they slept. <laughs> and Shaul and Barnaba were and Silo were, were praying and singing at midnight. Yeah. Look where they choose to sing. <laughs> the reason why some of you don't have the shaking experience and the freedom that you need is that you are asking Yahweh to do things that are contrary to what he's supposed to do for your life. He is supposed to allow you to go through things. Yeah. So you can develop patience. You can develop perseverance. You can have the tenacity to say that I have knowledge of him. And because I know him, what the book said, those who know their God shall be strong. Those who know him will be strong and will do great work for him. Put you in a position to bring it to subjection. Bring it to subjection. Get you strong in the faith. Stop crying over what you're supposed to rejoice about. Here's some of you saying in your spirit as a church, people say, it's hard. It's tough. You don't understand what I'm going through. I don't need to understand what you're going through. I'm happy to go through it. Apostle is a lot. It is never a lot. Apostle is too much. It can't be too much. Yes, Mr. John. Right. See? But when you're going through, that's the only time you'll get knowledge, you'll get wisdom, you'll get everything. You yes. Get patient, you get shalom. My Lord. Somebody one time say, Apostle, I've lost my job. And I say, Hallelujah. They say, I know you well. I know you. I know you. I know you. Say, Hallelujah to my losing the job. We all be saying, Glory. Glory. I got a job to give you, so I'll be telling you. I say, Praise Yahweh. It's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> By the spirit of unemployment. What is that? Brother say, man, apostle, man, I, I've gone through a whole lot of, and I lost my job, and, and I said, we calm down. Yeah, another pastor mentioned maybe he'd gone to service by another pastor, and I was about to lose a house. Uh -huh. A whole house. Uh -huh. I said, don't worry, they heart. She said, apostle, the bank is about to take the house. My response was, glory to you, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> she said, I know you. Yeah. No, that's just you tell me. I said it's a good thing. I said that's good. She me that I said it's good that you lose the house. Before she does the house on 2001 part, find a crash. And she wasn't driving it. And she said, look at this car. This car is totaled. I said, that's good. <laughs> they told the car on the yard. I said, man, that's wonderful. Let go. I said, hallelujah. <laughs> what? You crash? You take the long? Wonderful. She said, she said, boss, I know you're crazy. <laughs> She said, I'm having good, but I trust Yahweh, I trust the God in you. Amen. Because the things you say when trouble comes, you got to be crazy. I said, don't worry, it's all right. You'll be all right. Within a week, she was driving a 2013 Nissan Pathfinder. A man bought it since it's in Florida. I drove the brand new vehicle. I said, I don't like it no more, I don't want to drive this. And a friend called a, a dealer said, hey, I have a new car here. I can think of no one else to get it to the new. And she gave in Jersey now. Some of you know who are this thing. The fellow said, this thing has all the warranty in it. Five years. Anything goes wrong, they fix it. 100,000 miles. You want it? She said, send it. 
The man put it on a tow truck. He said, I wouldn't let it drive a thousand miles to find you. Put it on a truck and delivered it right in the middle of a crash. In the yard. I said, you see? She said, I'm going to know you're crazy. Right. <laughs> I don't have to worry over stuff. No. So when she was about to lose our house, I said, don't, it's all right. You're good. So she went house hunting. We had to go live in an apartment for a while. Then I said, okay, you're about to get what you deserve now. It's time. Because you didn't cry, you didn't holler. You didn't fast and pray and buy no house with a demon. She lost a house that had three bedrooms and we built two more on it. She noticed the one that has about ten. The one she lost, she lost when she had a man. And he left. Right. This one she bought when she got no man. Amen. 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 And how did this one happen? Because I was in the US. And the, the old, she said, the, the, the dealer said, I have a house here. They called it the real estate agent. So she took me. And the old woman who lived in the president used to come visit the house in New Jersey. Because that, she was singing, some popular singer, whatever it was. And the only thing was in bed, she couldn't see. And the, the, the dealer said, I, the, the, the agent said, I brought a pastor and, and the lady wants to buy the house from you. He said, yeah. So out of the blue, the old woman said, tell him to come pray for me. Because I'm dying. And I went up to the room and sat with her and prayed. And I rubbed her head and, and talked to her and stuff like that. And we left. My sister called me and said, the deal fell through. The woman's family said, they're not selling the house anymore. That's no problem. Not an issue. Don't worry. That's good. Months went by. Again, she was in, not this time, she's in Florida. Some of her in Florida. She was in Florida working. And some people came to find her in Florida. All the way from New Jersey. To say, we have to find you. She said, what's the problem? The owner, the old man died. And she told the executives of the, of the estate who was supposed to um, fulfill the will, find that young woman who came with the past to pray for me. Nobody else must live in this house. Find her. I don't care where she is. Find her. She must get this house for me. It has about the largest yard space in the whole of East Orange. Huge. More house than they could ask for. It came with two cars in the yard. Everything that was there was hers. The full garage and stuff, everything was hers. Because she was not prepared to lose faith over a lost house. Saints, you have to have the courage to persevere. When I talk to Apostle Branham, it makes me sometimes wonder what else can you go through in life? But he does not despise Yahweh. Never. You go through stuff. Yes. He told you last week, dealing with some divorce and, 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 and infidelity and stuff like that. He has the grace. Because I can't do it. No boy. I haven't been in such a at this stage, I can't deal with that. But Yahweh will never put you in a situation whereby your patience runs out. He puts you in a way by your patient increases. Amen. It doesn't run out. You can deal with it. Yes. You can go through it. Yes. Those who laugh at you now may very well begin to envy you in the near future because you are patient enough to endure. So in closing, what must my prayer be for your life? What you just read. I don't pray to get people out of trouble. Somebody called me the other day and said they want me to pray for a relative of theirs who is sick. Possibly he's very sick or the person is very sick. Please pray for them. I said, is the person saved? I'm not sure. I said, we'll find out. 
Because if the person is not, I am not praying. I said, does the person believe in Yeshua and Yahweh? I'm not sure. Find out. When you tell me they believe, we talk. This is not a ministry whereby people just come here and throw out a request. Pray for this person. Pray for that one and we just jump and pray for them. No. Questions are asked first. Because if you don't believe, it's a waste of my time. So saints, don't be discouraged when you go through certain things this week or next week and you, you, you feel as if life has gotten so hard. It's a good thing. It's a blessed thing. It's a glorious thing for you to see that all I need in my life is knowledge. Power from Yahweh. And discernment to know what is best for me in this life. It's a good thing. What did Joseph tell his brothers? What you meant for evil. Don't you have to be preaching the hollow about that kind of stuff? What you meant for evil. Yahweh turned, Elohim turned this thing around for good. Who's good? All of us. A saint does not have bad days. You are always in the will of your father. Amen. Amen. So you, yes, you must have thanksgiving in whatever state you are. Don't be anxious for anything. But in all things, in everything through prayer and supplication, make a request not to Yahweh with what? Thanksgiving. It's a blessing to share this with you today. Because you will not be inclined to go calling and hopping around the place for a prayer to escape trouble. You will now have rest. You will have shalom, peace in whatever state you find yourself. They'll see you smiling over what they swear used to make you hard. They hear you saying it's okay to what you used to say is not okay. Sometimes they hear like this, Janet, they'll see you quiet when you, once, when you were once loud about the matter. You have shalom. Rest in that shalom. Be confident in that shalom. And grow knowing that our Father has equipped us with leaders who know what to ask for on your behalf. Let us stand and stretch your legs a little bit. You've been sitting for a long time. Facebook viewers, thank you so much for your time. Remember Thursday we'll be gathering again for our session. Amen. Oh Yahweh be praised.